You cannot just look to government. We are the government of God. And we need to begin to speak into the atmosphere, shift the atmosphere, let the power there begin to settle into the earth. And how many layers did you say it was going to go? Five? I don't even understand what this man says sometimes. But I've been with him enough to know he's, a, he's an accurate prophet. So I'm going to say the word of the Lord and what you decree is going to go five layers into the ground. I don't know what that is, but it's going to happen. And then in verse 12, he says, I am watching. You've seen well, Jeremiah, because I'm watching over my word to Asa with it. I'm going to put my words in your mouth, Jeremiah. And I'm watching over those words to create Asa. Did you know that's what Jesus said on the cross when he said it's finished? He may have been speaking Hebrew, Asa. He may have been speaking Greek, to Tetelestai. Tetelestai means finished. It means accomplish. It bring, means bring something to the, the intended goal. It's only one, one word, which, whether he said Hebrew or Greek. Jesus did not bow his head like you've seen in the movies and go, it is finished. He cried with a loud voice. And he said either, Asa! He cried with a loud voice and the earth quaked when he said it. Or he said, Tetelestai. And the word Tetelestai not only means perform, accomplish, it's what they stamped on the invoices in the marketplace of the day, meaning paid in full. He was saying the debt is paid in full, but he may have been speaking Hebrew because he was quoting from Psalm twenty-two, thirty-one. the last word of that Psalm, which is all about his sufferings on the cross. The last word is Asa. I have accomplished it. Or he may have been saying new creation come forth because Asa means to create. And Jeremiah, Jeremiah is told, I'm going to watch over your, your, my words that I give to you. You're going to speak my words and I'm going to perform or accomplish with them. That's how I'm going to tear down. That's how I'm going to pluck up. That's how I'm going to overthrow. You're going to speak for me into the atmosphere of the nation and it's going to do something. It's going to do more than make you feel good in a room full of people when you sing it. It's going to go out through the atmosphere into the nation and cause some Something to topple and fall and something else to rise up. That's a good word. I feel like I'm getting close to being able to spit on the front row. I'm, I'm so into this right now. And then he says in Isaiah 55, 11, so, you know, I, feel, I was thinking about Chuck when he was talking about the limp. Is that what you said? Did you call it the limp? How long, oh, he said, how long do you, you know, how long do you halt between opinions? But that, that, that word there, pasak, it's, it's, it's a word that means to, to, to hop or leap. So it's also the word for, since it's the word for this, it's the word for hesitate because you're going this way and then you hesitate. Anytime you see this in Hebrew, it's a picture language. It's that word. So it's the word for Passover. It's the word for dance. Because, I'm, you know. So Elijah says, how, how long are you going to limp between opinions? You should be dancing the dance of Passover, Israel. You should be dancing and you should be rejoicing over your enemies. You should be dancing around the, at the Red Sea singing, God, the horse and the rider thrown into the sea. This is the time to dance. Passover has happened. Let's dance. But you're limping the limp of Baal. And California should be dancing the dance of Passover, but California is limping the limp of Baal. Isaiah 55, 11. I love this verse. So shall my words be that go out of my mouth. They won't return to me void. They'll what? They'll accomplish what I please. And 
succeed in what I sent them to do. Accomplish as I saw. My words will create. They will perform. How are you going to get this done? Caller, is there, is there a program that's good enough that we could launch here today that could change this nation or this state? Is there a good enough idea that we could implement and get enough brochures or drop this or that or knock on enough doors or get the right person in office somehow or overthrow those that aren't good? Is there something we could initiate here today that could get this done? How are you supposed to do what we're saying to you right now? You're supposed to, there's, there's only one way to do it. You take the word of the Lord and you do what he says. And Judah begins to sing and worship. And, to, and once you, you go this way enough up as priestly intercessors and worshipers, sooner or later, you're sitting right there at the throne and you're not going this way anymore. You're speaking down this way. And you start prophesying into the atmosphere. And you say, this is what the king says. This is what Yahweh says. And when you do that, he says, my words, they won't return to me void. They will create something. The message translation says they will accomplish the assignment I gave them. When he speaks prophetically or through his word, he says, my words have assignments on them. And they'll accomplish what I have assigned them to do. You need to be diligent over the next six, five months. There better not be a day, there shouldn't be a day that goes by that you're not decreeing what you've heard in this gathering over the state of California. This is a gate of the glory of the Lord. The word of the Lord is going five layers into the ground. Breakthrough is coming by March. You better be saying this. I'm telling you, you need to get these recordings. You need to write them down and you need to be saying it every day. When you drive through your neighborhood, you need to be saying the glory of God's coming to my neighborhood. When you're at work, you need to be saying, healing rooms are coming into businesses. God's about to pour out extraordinary miracles that's going to awaken a state and a region and a nation. That's what you need to be saying. Because when you say that, into the atmosphere they go. No word spoken by God through you. Through you. Every scripture I've read to you up here, when he said, my words do this and this and this and this and this, every passage is referring to something he's saying through a person. He does not just belch them out of the heavens and the atmosphere. He says them through people. 